Ah, picture frames. They add polish and personality to our cherished memories, but crafting them yourself can be a frustrating dance with imprecise tools and unforgiving materials. Let's face it, traditional frame making is full of pitfalls. Hey fellow DIYers and seasoned woodworkers, are you tired of those boring, predictable picture frames from the store? Do you crave the satisfaction of DIY, even though it involves copious amounts of frustration and questionable life choices? Then grab your lumber and a bucket of tears, because we're about to embark on a journey into the wild world oh, of perilous pitfalls and traditional picture framing. So where do we even start? Well, first things first, we need to gather our arsenal of tools. We're talking enough clamps to hold down Gulliver, a miter saw that's gonna scream like a banshee, and an endless amount of measuring and setup devices. Remember here, the, the more obscure the tool, the better. And bonus points if you can find a way to incorporate this pretentious hole puncher into your project. Next, we need lumber. You could certainly rummage through your endless offcuts, but you know, you want to start fresh. So you head to your local retailer and you grab a stick. You search and search and finally settle on the straightest one you can find. Before you begin your journey into picture frame purgatory, you head over to the tubes to see what the pros are telling you you should do. You start scrolling through endless videos only to realize you're going to need a degree in mechanical engineering and some pretty deep pockets to make all of these fancy jigs. You'll spend hours cutting the parts and pieces to make these damn things and fiddling with more knobs, dials, and levers than a nuclear safety engineer. No! Only, only to realize you could have just used a tape measure and a prayer to make your frame. After hours of wasted time dreaming of those fancy jigs, you finally decide to tackle those miters. Don't worry about precision, just wing it. Embrace the wobble and wiggle of that perfectly calibrated miter maker because the close enough is good enough philosophy, that's what we're aiming for. Remember, every wonky angle adds character, or at least that's what you should tell yourself because your frame is gonna look like a parallelogram worthy of a Picasso cubist portrait. Now that your parts are cut, it's time for everybody's favorite part, the glue up. Apply that wood glue with the grace of a toddler finger painting because the messier, the merrier. Clamp it down like you're trying to escape Alcatraz and pray that the boards don't spontaneously combust from the sheer force of your frustration. Because you were so excited to get your frame glued together, you're frantically on the clock, so you scramble to get those pieces to align. You grab your pretentious green hole puncher and figure, this ought to do the trick, right? And you start punching holes in your pieces like Riley and Jonesy after losing a game of chell to the skids. But even a $1,500 hole punch won't heal this wound. So, out comes the old pocket hole jig, because if you can't finesse it, you force it. Blue up number two, you remember that painter's tape is your green knight Gawain. Slapping that tape on is gonna hold everything nice and tight while the glue does its voodoo magic. Even if you don't get those perfect miters, you can just slather in enough wood filler to choke a small herd animal. No one will ever know. No one will judge you because the memory you're preserving in the frame will garner all of the attention, right? Now for the piece de resistance, sanding. You grab your favorite purple product, the coarser the grit, the better, because remember, we're aiming for that rustic I found this frame in a cave look. And you grab your trusty overpriced green brand random orbit and you lay into that bastard like a kid who just got suspended from school. Sand, sand, sand until your arms feel like jelly and your lungs resemble a vacuum cleaner bag. But don't forget to round everything over. Finally, finally the grand finale. You've reached the finish line. You can feel free to unleash your inner abstract expressionist. Drips, splatter, brush strokes that look like a toddler's macaroni art, embrace it all. Remember, the more unique your finish, the less likely anyone will notice those wonky miters. Oh, 
and don't forget to add a layer of protection because frames are, you know, high traffic items. A half a can of lacquer or so should do the trick. Well, there you have it, folks, your very own handcrafted one-of-a-kind picture frame. Sure, it's not exactly a masterpiece, but hey, at least you can say you did it yourself and probably learned a few new swear words in the process. But wait, 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 wait. You were looking for a payoff to all of the frustration of traditional frame making, right? I mean, I did call the miter joint the old way in the thumbnail. And yeah, there's a beacon of hope in this hell that is picture frame making. Enter the Shaper Origin, the picture framer's knight in shining armor. This CNC powerhouse takes the pain out of framing and turns it into a smooth and satisfying experience. With the Shaper Origin in your corner, the possibilities are endless. Craft sleek, modern frames that would make IKEA jealous or go rustic with chunky farmhouse vibes. If you're feeling fancy, you can carve intricate patterns or add text for a personalized touch. The Origin is your oyster and the picture frames are your pearls. Folks, we're in Shaper Studio, and I'll be designing these frames in real time, no sped up footage. In order to get our frame started, we need to create the outline of our picture. In my case, I need five by seven frames. Once you have your outline, you can copy that image and now determine what you want your reveal to be. In my case, I'm going to size down by a half an inch on all sides. This will give me a space to recess my acrylic, the photo, and the backer. The final step in this process is to decide on how large you want the overall frame to be. I'm going with an inch and a quarter or so on all sides to give me a frame that's got some healthy dimensions to it. One extra step in this design will eliminate the tedious step of having to chisel out our corners. We all know that square edges don't fit into rounded corners all that well. So to avoid any further unnecessary steps, we need to add some 3 8 diameter holes into all four corners. Be sure to space these holes evenly and place them on the outside of your desired picture size opening. If 3 8 of an inch is too tight, give yourself extra room and make them a half an inch. This is the backside of the frame. No one's going to see it. We'll use the helix feature when we cut these, which will be a total breeze, and this step will make more sense when I show you the entire cut process. Lastly, if a simple rectangular frame is just a wee bit too boring, then click the search button and type in picture frame. Select whatever shape your heart desires. Studio has hundreds of options to choose from, so you don't have to do any laborious designing. Simply click, scale, center, and upload to your machine. In less than three minutes, you've designed a basic frame that doesn't require any elaborate jigs, ultra precise cuts, and in less than 30 minutes, you can have a finely cut project, all of your sanding done, and maybe even get a coat of your favorite finish applied. Before we begin making any cuts, we need to know the thickness of our stock as well as the thickness of our acrylic and our backer. Once we know these dimensions, we can set our cut depths accordingly. In my case, I have a five millimeter thickness as far as the acrylic and backer, and my material itself is about 17 millimeters, so I'm going to be making my cuts about 12 millimeters in depth. 
So before I begin any of my cuts, I wanna let you know that I am using a quarter inch diameter compression bit to make all of my cuts. This is gonna give me the best cut quality on the face and the backside of my frame. To begin our cut process, I'm gonna start by establishing the corners of my five x seven opening by using the helix feature and plunging to 12 millimeters in depth. These holes are going to eliminate the need to chisel out our corners like traditional picture frames. Next, I'll be making my first set of passes with a slight offset at six millimeters in depth. I use offsets all the time to sneak up on cuts and this allows me some wiggle room just in case I do get a wonky cut. After making the first cut of the actual opening, I'll repeat the process for the 5x7 opening, no change in settings. On the second pass, I'll drop the bit another 6 millimeters, and I'll move my offset in just a tiny bit. Again, the name of the game here is to not get too aggressive with your cuts and just let the bit do its job. Finally, I'll set the offset to zero and free the picture opening with a 19 millimeter pass. If I know that my stock is 17 millimeters in thickness, I want to cut ever so slightly into my spoil board to make sure I get a through cut. I'll then retract the bit back to 12 millimeters and make my final pass for the 5x7 opening. The 5x7 opening will be so precise that I'm going to get a real solid friction fit for the acrylic in the backer board. So with these tolerances, no need for one of those fancy frame Brad Naylor doohickeys. Lastly, I repeat the three depths of cut with the corresponding offsets to cut the perimeter of the frame. This frame literally took 13 minutes and 22 seconds to cut and it was pretty much finished ready. So why would you use this high-tech tool for something as seemingly simple as picture frames? Well, there are actually a handful of advantages. Advantage number one, precision and accuracy. I mean, forget about wobbly cuts and uneven miters. Those are a thing of the past. The Shaper Origin cuts with laser-like precision, ensuring your frames are perfectly aligned and seamless. Secondly, there's unlimited design possibilities. You can go beyond square or rectangle frames. Shaper Origin lets you create intricate profiles, curves, and even text directly onto your frame material, which is going to open up a world of endless design possibilities. Thirdly, it's a faster workflow. Ditch all of the time-consuming processes of setting up jigs and making multiple cuts. The Shaper Origin streamlines workflow, allowing you to quickly and efficiently create multiple frames in no time. Fourthly, reduce material waste. I mean, traditional frame making often generates a lot of scrap wood. You're gonna cut, recut, continue to trim, fine size, Shaper Origins Precision Cutting minimizes waste, making it far more sustainable than traditional frame making processes. And lastly, this is the one that I think gets overlooked the most often, is that the Shaper Origin is beginner friendly. You do not need to be intimidated by tech. Shaper is surprisingly easy to use, even for beginners. I mean, it is intuitive. The interface, and all of the design software is readily available with tutorials that are gonna make it a breeze to learn and master this machine. So ditch the frustrations, the tears, and the existential dread when it comes to the old-fashioned miter joint. With the Shaper Origin, picture framing becomes a joy, not a chore. Turn your walls into a gallery of your own making and impress your friends and, hell, maybe even yourself with your framing prowess. Remember, life is too short for bad miters and ugly picture frames. Thanks for watching everyone and go forth. Frame with confidence and let your creativity shine.
Disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes only. Please do not attempt actual picture framing without proper skill, safety equipment, unnecessary jigs, excessive amounts of time to waste, and a boatload of antidepressants. I take no responsibility for any broken tools, bruised egos, or existential crises caused by following this video's advice.